when you come up short, I mean, for real, look at this. All right, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, aliens and predators alike. We have been hard at work, and uh, I know you guys didn't want another boring cabinet making video, so I made this cabinet to go on top. And uh, let's see if I can zoom out. Yeah, I've got the microwave in, and I've got some nice storage space on the right there. Couldn't put it all the way to the front there. But have no fear, uh, there's a couple things that might go there, either storage or I've got a CO2 fire extinguisher that I'm probably going to hang there too since I've got all this electrical stuff down here. Alright, so here's the, uh, the uh, vanity I made the other day. I've got, uh, I made this flip up table as well. And then I've got to cut the uh, tailpiece drain pipe off and get it fit into the uh, gray water tank because I have the tube, the clamp, and the jug now. So, feeling pretty good there. And then the next mission is going to be to put some kind of small storage along the side here on the passenger side and not uh, be too overwhelming like the kitchen thing here. And then probably also some kind of storage down here and maybe something there behind the driver's seat so anyhow the fun continues so yeah so right now i'm bending brackets to uh to keep the microwave from uh floating around and uh here's an outside view of the flip up prep table and uh I'm not sure if it's extended long enough. Uh, I've got a seat swivel coming in, so maybe, probably not close enough to be like a laptop workstation, but I actually might make this top bigger. I've got a few inches. I could probably actually make it a little bit bigger. It's, you know, semi-sturdy. So, uh, yeah, we'll see when the sweet seat swivel comes in. All right, so currently what I'm doing are bending these L brackets into this shape. Um, so there's some screws on the bottom of the microwave that I'm going to use and I'll screw the other end to the bottom of the cabinet. But uh, currently I'm putting this little S bin into it and then I'll chop it off about here and then chop it off about here and have a little short stubby bracket there that I can mount the, uh, the microwave to the bottom of the cabinet and that'll keep it from moving around. So let's get to it. All right, compliments of the vise and Dremel. We have our two... Uh, straps and uh, we'll go put them on the microwave all right so what I'm doing now is so I got the microwave in and I uh, found a little bitty uh, pigtail extension so this is a typical tailpiece to a sink drain I just cut it short here because I got a very short uh, can this is some pool drain tube so this is an inch and a half um, outside diameter so this is an inch and a half inside diameter so it fits just over the tailpiece here I'm going to hose clamp it down and then I'm going to cut this hose to whatever length I need it and uh, hopefully that will fit in our uh, gray water jug. I probably won't need much, just a small pigtail there and uh, that's what we're going to use. So uh, let's tighten this puppy down and uh, get her in. Put some right on there. And let's go see what uh, length we need it. All right, so I only need to make a cut here in this rib. So I think I can cut this with the, uh, hopefully with a hacksaw. Indeed. This is a part. By the way, this is a pool drain tube. Perfect fit and cheap. I think these are used for drain and also for the sump pumps. All right, so what I want to do now is figure out how to modify this lid 
because it's almost a perfect fit for this thing to go in there. So I want to cut a circle out here. I think I can do that with the hole saw. All right, there's the hole in the lid. Pipe fits down in there. So I'll probably cut it just a little bit too big. So I'll probably get like a rubber washer to put around this or get a new lid and cut a smaller hole. I didn't quite have the right size, uh, but it'll work for now. When you're in the pinch, rubber bands work great as a seal. Put two of them around it, much tighter. All right. Yeah, now I need to get some D-rings in here and put some straps around these so they won't uh, move around. All right, so I've got the drain tube for the gray water and I've got a tie down point. I've got the fresh water tie down point inside the cabinet so yeah those are the things that I wanted to do today and it is Mother's Day and a Sunday I also put a tie down point around here because this thing was rattling like crazy before so I'm gonna test drive and see if this still rattles if and if it does I'm gonna come up with an alternative solution and then make sure the microwave doesn't rattle and then probably come back Monday and start working on the shelving up here and I did order a little 12 by 12 storage ottoman kind of thing it may fit perfectly in there and I might even be able to stack two of them I might be able to put uh, lay them on the side as well it depends on how the, the actual lid opens on them but uh, anyhow so I got a seat swivel coming as well and uh, We'll have to give it a test run and see how it works one night because, uh, I mean, you put this stuff together and you just kind of think it works like, you know, seems logical when you're putting it together. But we all know when you, uh, when you start to stay in these things, it's probably going to change a bit. So, all right. So <clears throat> the other thing I did, uh, this past week was actually install this keypad. It's basically just double sided tape, but you can, uh, program just using the procedure in your owner's manual it's, it's somewhere around page 55 56 upper 50s in the owner's manual but uh, it's kind of great to not have to pull the key out of your pocket and you can kind of enter you could enter the van and lock the van so I think that'll be good for riding kayaking whatever trail hiking any of that stuff so the next thing I got to do is um, let's see where is it I guess my batteries are in the motorcycle, but I need to prepare a harness to actually with an XT90 connector on it and uh, connect that up to the hot bus and the ground bus in the battery pack so that I can charge my motorcycle batteries from the coach batteries in the vehicle. So that's one of the up and coming projects as well. All right, so I'll show you guys the other project for today. So. I basically went to my DC fuse panel there and wired up the cable here and put an XT60 on the end of it. And I made it kind of long because I may or may not want to be charging inside this box. But I left a space here where this firebox and this both of my lithium batteries for the motorcycle actually fit inside this box. So it's a bit safer way to charge. But what should happen now if I plug this into the ISDT T6, which is the balance charger, it should power up. And then I just plug my batteries into this board here and uh, they, uh, they should charge from the uh, coach batteries. So let's see what happens when we plug this in. Right. So it looks like we have good power on there. And so all I need to do is go get the uh, batteries out of the motorcycle back there and put them in the box and charge them up. Let's try it. All right, so those are my batteries. Uh, let's put them in the box and connect them up. See what happens.
see what happens. We go to charge. So charge max current I've got set to uh, 20 amps and cell voltage 4.18 and I put a 25 amp fuse in so let's, let's see what happens when we uh, try it. I might end up turning the, the current down but uh, let's see how much the draw is uh, going to occur here. We're at 13.16. I'm impressed so far, it's holding at 15.8 amps. So the box fits perfectly in there, obviously. This is the intent in the beginning. Just to have room for this uh, battery system. And we're almost there already. I can Alright, we're finished charging that battery and I'll just charge the second one. I won't record it, but uh, at least it works. You know, it's not as good as charging it with a high voltage system, but uh, at least the batteries did pretty good and they weren't drawn down all the way. So, we'll have to do a true test on it once we ride the motorcycle. Got the other battery in the box. She's screaming now. You're the fan. Voltage dropped down to 13.07. But I'm impressed. Let's see how long it takes. Here we are, we're done. <clears throat> Alright, so final update on the small projects. Obviously, uh, little some paper towels there. And then also, I put this Defender uh, mat down. It's supposed to uh, keep mold from populating. It's got a cloth side and then it has this kind of like mesh plastic side. And uh, you put the mesh plastic down and it lets the airflow go under the actual mat. So the other thing that you may notice is that uh, I also finished polyurethane the whole van so all the sides all the way down the top the ceiling so I had to do that because my next project before I take a small break on building this thing out is going to be to build some type of storage up there um, smaller type storage but uh, storage nonetheless so uh, that's probably what I'm going to tackle tomorrow, but uh, we'll see. All right, that'll do it for today's video. Just a quick update. Give me a thumbs up if you like the content. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, it'd be awesome if you go click that bell for post notifications and also click the subscribe button. You know what to do. Till next time, skill up and ride. Man up and go.